exactly where their senators stand. Our institution will not shrink from this important duty. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, as you know, today, or very shortly, the Senate is going to be taking up S-1, called the Strengthening America's Security in the Middle East Act. Through the chair, I would say that, uh, as you know, Mr. President, uh, S-1 is being offered by Senator Marco Rubio, the senior senator from Louisiana, or rather from Florida. Um, he, as we also know, is whip smart, and Senator Rubio is, has forgotten more about foreign policy than I will ever know. I have enormous respect for him, and nothing I say today is meant to uh, criticize his extraordinary efforts on this bill, much of which I have supported and will continue to support. But there's a deficiency in S-1, Mr. President. We can do better by filling that hole. Once again, Congress is paying lip service to protecting our allies in the Middle East. We're calling this bill a protector of our allies in the Middle East, and in large part it is, with a major exception. Because once again, the United States Senate is leaving behind our friends and allies, allies the Kurds. It's not the first time the Kurds have been left behind, Mr. President. The Kurds were left behind when the Ottoman Empire collapsed and there remained a stateless people. The Kurds were left behind as modern states grew up around them. In Syria, in Iran, in Iraq, in Turkey, where they had no political representation where the Kurds had no future besides oppression. The Kurds were left behind again in 2011 when Allied troops pulled out of Iraq and ISIS was just beginning to emerge. It's time, Mr. President, that we break that pattern once and for all, and the Senate can do it in Senator Rubio's stellar effort in the form of S-1. Now, as I said, Mr. President, S-1 does some really good things. Uh, thank you, Senator Rubio. It, uh, it will reaffirm our commitment to protecting Israel, one of our closest, our, certainly our closest friend in the region, maybe our best friend in the world. Sometimes, sometimes I think Israel is our only friend in the world. S-1 will strengthen our bond with Jordan, another key ally in fighting terrorism and the humanitarian catastrophe caused by the Syrian refugee crisis. It will combat a radical economic warfare campaign against Israel. Let me say that again because it's important. S-1 will combat a radical economic warfare campaign against Israel. I support that unconditionally. S-1 will create new sanctions on the government of Syria that targets those who've been laundering money to help the Assad regime. I support all of those things. But Mr. President, with, with all the respect I can, can muster, I say gently that it is a lie. It is a lie for anyone to say that S-1 protects all of our allies in the Middle East because it will not. S-1 makes no mention of our Kurds, our Kurdish allies, at all. And I have an amendment pending. I've offered an amendment, rather, that would fix that. Mr. President, there are 30 million Kurds in the Middle East. They don't have a state. They don't have a country to call their own. They're not really safe anywhere. As a result, the Kurdish people have suffered tremendously throughout history. They've been subjected to discrimination, massacres, forced relocation, and countless other human rights violations.
Saddam Hussein attacked more than 4,000, 4,000 Kurdish villages, not people, Kurdish villages with poison gas and other chemical weapons during the Iran-Iraq war. 180,000 people died. They were murdered. Many more were tortured. Even more were imprisoned. Thousands fled. Not that they had anywhere to go. In the 1990s, Turkish soldiers made a hobby out of burning down Kurdish villages. Since 1984, more than 40,000 Turkish Kurds have been killed. They still face oppression today in nearly every country they inhabit. The Turkish defense minister made cl that clear in December when he said that when the time comes, the Kurds, quote, will be buried in the ditches they dug. No one should doubt this. That's a quote. Now, through all this incomprehensible suffering, the Kurds have stood by America. And we have stood by them through the decades, through thick and through thin. The Kurds have been instrumental at every phase of U.S. engagement in Iraq and Syria, every phase. Going back to the 2003 invasion, Kurdish fighters have been crucial boots on the ground in the fight against Islamic tyranny, and that's just a fact. The parts of Iraq retaken and controlled by the Kurds were strongholds for Western values like democracy and capitalism and multiculturalism. In fact, when Allied forces withdrew in 2011, not a single U.S. soldier had lost his life or her life in Kurdish territory. The Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces, better known as the SDF, have been another set of boots on the ground in the fight against ISIS. With the help of coalition supplies and weapons and airstrikes, the SDF recaptured large parts of northern and eastern Syria from ISIS's iron grip. Four years ago, Mr. President, you'll recall, there were 100,000 ISIS soldiers. Thanks in large part to our Kurdish allies, those numbers today are 5,000. Today, ISIS has surrendered 99% of its territory, including its capital in Raqqa. The so-called caliphate's fighters are now being held to a small sliver of territory on the eastern border with Iraq, near the Euphrates River. Our Kurdish allies deserve much of the credit for these successes. Now, it's plain, Mr. President, to see that the Syrian Kurds have been invaluable in America's fight against jihadists and tyrants in the Middle East. Today, the SDF controls nearly, and, and you will recall that the uh, SDF, by, by the SDF, I re refer to the uh, Syrian Kurds, the SDF controls nearly a quarter of Syria right now. That's land that doesn't belong to ISIS. That's land that doesn't belong to Assad, a butcher. That's land that doesn't belong to Russia. And that's land that doesn't belong to Iran. More importantly, it's land where the Syrian Kurds know that they will be free from persecution and from slaughter. Now, for a while now, I've been asking my colleagues in the Senate to support my amendment to S-1. My amendment would promote, promote stability and security for our close friends in the Middle East because it's the right thing to do, Mr. President. It's the moral thing to do. And Americans' foreign policy has always had a moral component. My amendment would allow the U.S. to defend the Kurds in Syria by giving the president, not requiring the president to do anything, but it would give the, the president the authority to use our military as he deems fit to keep our promise and to protect our allies and all of our allies. 
And after all, the Kurds have contributed to the fight against ISIS, and we owe them some peace of mind as we draw down our presence in the region. As we draw down our presence in the region, it's time to stand up and stand by our friends to make sure the fight stays won. The, uh, the threat of U.S. military force, Mr. President, has been a major deterrent for the reemergence of jihadists like ISIS and al-Qaeda. As the, pre the President knows well, weakness invites the wolves. Our presence has held back Assad, it's held back Turkey, it's held back Russia, and it's held back Iran from gaining stronger footholds in the area. Without assurances of our support, as we wind down our effort in Syria, the Kurds will be left behind to fend for themselves. And without the Kurds, we cannot be certain who will step in to fill the power vacuum in the areas of Syria that they currently control. We can only guess, and the answers to those guesses don't look good. If the Kurds are vulnerable to attack from Turkey or Syrian rebels, they may have to turn to their enemies for protection out of fear. And even if they don't, they can't fight off the Turkish military if the Turkish military decides to attack and pursue the remnants of ISIS at the same time. To abandon the, Kur the Kurds now would be unconscionable. To abandon the Kurds now would compromise the security of our allies, Israel and Jordan, and it would risk exposing the region to more turmoil. I want to urge my colleagues in the Senate to think about the Kurds, Mr. President as they consider how best we can strengthen Americans' interests and security in the Middle East. It's time we make sure that America keeps the promises that we've made to all of our allies, not just some of our allies, all of our allies in the Middle East. Toward that end, Mr. President, I hereby offer a second amendment that I'm sending to the desk. This second degree amendment will amend amendment number 65 proposed by Senator McConnell. As most people are painfully aware, we just came through a 